Hi everybody. Messy altar, I know. Uh, once again, I hope this video finds you doing well. I think that's my standard introduction, isn't it? <laughs> Jade is here. Today is Saturday, and I kind of hesitate to show this picture here, okay, because it is very misunderstood, but I am honoring Lilith, okay? She's an aspect of the moon, and she's also an aspect of Saturn. Please follow community guidelines and be respectful. If you don't understand something and you don't like something, um, you can change the channel. Otherwise, I will be reporting negative comments and deleting them. It is an aspect of my level in my magical maturity. As I stated yesterday, I believe, that I have come to astrology. And again, it's uh, similar to Clifford Hartley Lowe, and I'll be quoting him again, as he said when he first started on his journey of learning about the universe, he started with astrology, which he thought was rather dry and boring. <laughs> and so he started his explorations of many different uh, studies and traditions and systems until one day he met someone and began to talk about stellar magic and astrology. And he said, like finding the lost sock in the back of the closet, it was there he found his magical maturity. And so we come full circle. I, like me, I'm coming full circle back to astrology with a much better understanding because I've worked with the planets and I've worked with the moon. I understand um, archetypes and the personification of things such as the planets and the moon. Jade, please do not hit my light. No, don't, don't, don't box with me. No, no. Now, I will pull out my chart in a minute, but I have said several times now that Lilith came to me when I was a... No, Jade. Okay, all right, come here. About 59 and a half years old, and I was in the process of starting to realize that I needed to sell my mobile home. My youngest had moved away. I was feeling kind of abandoned. I was an empty nester. She was too far away for her to ever be coming back to visit me. So I was struggling to try to do everything by myself. It got to the point where I could not do the yard work anymore. I was suffering from mental exhaustion, nervous exhaustion. And where I lived, we were responsible for maintaining the yard and I didn't have a double wide, so I had a lot of yard. <laughs> I had not received a raise yet and I was only doing the one job for the school district. And it really wasn't enough. And there were no benefits. So I had ended the job I had as a second job because I was miserable. I had been overqualified for the years that I had been doing that off and on but I had a 401k and so I stuck it out as long as I could and then I cashed it out. It wasn't very much. It wasn't very much the first time either, but I did get to see the benefits of a 401k. You know, after about three years, you can start getting about 12% annually. So I'm in the bedroom. It's about October 22nd. Ironically, as I go back in my memory, I can see where it might have been the very day of not only my birthday, but the date that my divorce had been signed. 
And so that was in 2010 and it was now 2019, nine years later. I'm looking at how I'm going to continue staying in this mobile home and I hear this screeching owl just screaming at me right at my bedroom window. Now I had a tree in my yard, a big beautiful tree in my side yard, but it was in between the front door and the bedroom. Why this sounded so close to my bedroom window, I don't know, but it's almost like it was hanging on a branch, <laughs> you know, closest as it possibly could be. And perhaps it was sitting on the roof of my shed, which was much closer to my bedroom. But I, it sounded like it was right outside my window and I just froze. And I thought, what the hell, right? <laughs> So the next day or the day after, I went into the park office and I said, do we have screaming birds around here? <laughs> I've never seen anything except these little red cardinals, little squirrels. What do we have around here that screams? She said, I don't know. And I said, do we have screeching owls? Because I think I'd ask somebody and they said, oh, it sounds like a screeching owl. And all I got was, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. You know, why was this screeching owl at my bedroom window screaming at me? And I really had not been looking at my correct natal chart, my sidereal chart, or anything at that time. I was basically trying to survive. I was getting behind on everything. And within the next month, my, I mean, my lights had been going off for a few minutes anyway and then coming back on. Well, by the end of October and the first part of November, they were going out for longer and coming back on. But I think by the time December came, I think it was December. No, it was November. The front half of my, the lights in my mobile home just went out and they just didn't come back on. And I had flipped the switch. The breaker was in my bedroom. Nothing was working. I literally had to move everything into my bedroom. I had one light working in the kitchen and the laundry room. So I could still do my laundry and then get up and go to work. Take myself some breakfast in the kitchen. I had some <clears throat> battery operated candles going and at that time too I connected to Ganesha so I was chanting Sanskrit and anything else I could think of and it finally occurred to me that not only was I going to have to get some help to repair my home so that I could sell it I was going to have to sell it now this would enable me to get back half of my inheritance from the sale of the home and this is where my aspect of Lilith is in a position in my second house of Taurus. So I put this out today because I can see the benefit of where it is helping me to continue to honor her as well as the stellar magic talisman I have around my neck for moon in Taurus. And Lilith is an aspect of the moon. She's a personification of the moon. And it represents a point. Okay, it's a degree where the moon is the farthest away from the earth in shadow. Therefore, she represents the shadow aspect. And so I'm asking her now as a medium, because she's come to me several times lately, very strong. After I once, I once again had a a vision come to my mind in my third eye. I saw the character, the actress who played Lilith on Cheers as I was in bed waking up one morning. That's when I began to explore her and learned about the Black Moon Lilith and my natal chart. So this is where I say I finally reached my magical maturity. And this is something that high priestesses had to know. They had to know astronomy and the movements of the stars and astrology. So when you're younger, 
You experience these shadow aspects, these negative aspects. And I asked her, why, oh, why, oh, why are you given such a bad rap? What is this, you know, succubus, vampire, what the heck? What is all that? Because I'm not experiencing that with you at all. What I felt was, this is a shadow aspect. This is what we kind of have to go through until we realize, you know, we grow out of it. You have to go through it in order to get over it. And in fact, I've had a lot of challenges as a younger person, my 20s, my 30s, my 40s, right? And not knowing how to work magically with my natal chart for, you know, remedies until I actually made the talisman. And I etched Taurus in the moon on the back of my moonstone necklace, along with Aldebaran, which I did in, I think, early May, when the constellation of Taurus was overhead. And I really didn't know what was going to happen. I couldn't work anymore. I didn't have a car. I was out of time and I was out of money. And at the last minute, almost the very end of May, someone contacted my realtor and said, I want to buy that house. So I ended up getting back everything I put into it, including upgrades and building a storage shed. So that's one reason why I have this thousand dollars here on this piece of paper, because I have to keep my goal in mind for saving my next thousand dollars. So 30 minutes after I put this out, my boss called me and said, could you please, please come in and help us today? I do not have anyone to run the front and we need to get more merchandise put out. So I'm going to be running the register, learning more about how to do that, putting out more merchandise. That's my main job as the manager of merchandise. And then I'll be there until close and I will learn how to actually close the store, which is, you know, pretty important. And then tomorrow or next week, I'll be going in to watch more videos. I'm noticing that things are actually happening for me easier and faster. I have been realizing that I still need to try to work at least half a day, an easy assignment, if I can only get 25 to 28 hours at my new job right now. And sure enough, I didn't even have to call and ask my supervisor as I was, you know, voicing it out loud. If I can, if I can just call and get a half a day, maybe on a Friday or whatever my day off is going to be, right? It has to be an easy assignment. I got a call for an easy assignment, half day in the morning. I don't want to do afternoon. I said, wow, this is great. <laughs> One minute after that, I got another phone call for exactly the day I'm going to be off next week, the beginning of the week, half a day in the morning, that's it. Perfect. And I told my boss, you know, I can supplement my income right now with half days until we get busier because retail goes up and down. So, if you were to look at videos on Black Moon Lilith, this is the point that I was talking about that is in your natal chart. And it is said that this is the most challenging and that if you can master this energy, you can basically graduate and you will not have to come back and go through these challenges again. You may not even have to reincarnate again at all. So in a sense, because it's got like a cross, let me show you. You see this is a personification of that energy. Do you see here that moon crescent there with the cross underneath? That's exactly the astrological symbol 
in your natal chart. So you have to look and see where that is. And because she is so associated with the moon, this archetype is female. Now she's also corresponding to Saturn. And Saturn is this incredibly challenging, the most challenging, the most dense planet that we have. But if you can master Saturn's energies, you truly can master yourself. Now I can talk a lot more about this because as my husband and I had fallen on financial changes um, from middle class to lower middle class, I had thought after I got my degree, oh boy, you know, things are going to be just so great now and I'll get this wonderful job. And then 2008 hit and I had to eat humble pie. And I've had to learn how to deal with that and be frugal and figure out how to save money. I was very careful with my money and I pay cash for my car. So these, these are lessons that Saturn teaches as well. It has to do with whatever experience you've had in a previous life. That was your chance to remedy it. Now is your chance to do better. There's nothing wrong with living frugally and below your means to save money. It's not what you do. It's what you do with your money. And even though I will be making more money eventually, as we're busier and I have more hours, I am not ready to give up doing DoorDash once in a while or even working for the city half a day once in a while. I do not want to put all my eggs in one basket. Um, it's difficult for some people to really get out there and do that. But, you know, I had people that grew up, relatives who grew up, in the depression and they they did not finance things they just paid cash for them every single dollar that they could hold for themselves was important you're giving up your future money when you continually make these payments on something you're financing like a car right for months and months and months add it up right add it up so i spent nine months after i moved out of my mobile home waiting and looking for the type of car that I wanted, a late model Toyota Camry, and I had the cash for it, so then I went and I bought it. And this my, my stress has been relieved, my money has been freed up for other things, like a better place to live, and it's still been challenging. But um, I know now that by working this way, to connect to the Taurus and the Moon and the Saturn in my second house of money and finance, Taurus, that it is helping me along with Jupiter. Jupiter oversees my entire chart. So that's it for today. I'm going to have to make my lunch and I'm going to have to get ready to go to work. Have a good one.